here is just look at our mission fields in a year review. And first we'll start with Katie. It would have been last July 7, 2021, when the president of Haiti was assassinated. This plunged the island nation of Haiti into a chaos of political, social, economic turbulence and anarchy. If it hasn't been natural catastrophes such as earthquakes and hurricanes, medical crisis, it's street gangs, and anarchy in the streets. These street gangs control access to fuel, fuel, food. Inflation is out of control. Basic commodities are scarce. Diesel fuel has been over $11 a gallon. I asked Roman Dezeal how, how our people were faring. And uh, he admitted that it's, it's becoming more difficult. Hmm. The expenses of food and basic necessities. In the, in the Central Highlands, there's not quite the pressure, political pressure. And uh, they are able to grow a lot of the food that they consume. But the basic necessities commodities that have to come in from the city have uh, risen in prices just like they have here in the States. Mm. And uh, unfortunately, most of them do not have the opportunity to take on a second job mm. like we might have in our country. But uh, it's not been an easy time, but our people in Haiti are not discouraged. They're not uh, looking at what they don't have. They're looking at what they do have. Mm -hmm. and that's always a good advice, isn't it? Mm -hmm. look, at, uh, look at what God is doing. Mm -hmm. Not so much what the devil's doing. And uh, we need to keep them in our prayers. In September, Brother Motley met with the council. We had a three-day strategic planning and review time in Tonkanic, Pennsylvania. And uh, there was a larger emphasis on missions during that three days. We did have individual interviews with Steve Akeesia, who were home on furlough, Don Mobley, who came up from uh, Western Pennsylvania, and then Eric and, and Megan, who are working in uh, the city of Wolfsbury. We had interviews with each one of those, but the, the two and a half hours, I think it was two and a half hours that we had with Brother Mobley, three and a half hours we had that afternoon with Brother Mobley, uh, and enabled us as a council to gain invaluable insight and understanding of the culture and the mindset of our Haitian people. And he could say things to us that he nor I would say in a public service, just allowing us to get a little insight as to how they think, and how they operate. The leadership team has set the example for diligence and visitation, faithfulness and responsibility integrity, character, and doctrine. Talking with uh, Robin Dezeal just last week, he said Pastor Raniel is having some physical problems with, with uh, an incessant fever. Hmm. That's not a good sign, but the Lord knows and the Lord is able. His dad, Pastor Dezeal, who was one of the three leadership teams, has had high blood pressure for some time. And of the three, Pastor Florimond, who was the pastor of the church after the uh, Solo, is, is faring the best of the three of them. And, uh, they, have, they have a heart set on God's will and God's plan for their people. And they have not allowed the economic situation, they have not allowed the political chaos to diminish in any way what they're doing for Christ. And uh, we thank the Lord for that. In October, the Christian Aid Ministry, we worked with them some in the earlier years that I was traveling to Haiti, 
staying with my wife's niece and her husband. And at that time, five stair-step girls in Haiti. But they were living in the walled compound, Fenton compound, of the Christian Aid Ministry. It's that group and that place that was home to the uh, group of Christian Aid Ministry employees that were abducted back in October, uh, held captive by the gangs for two months. And uh, knowing some of the people there and keeping in contact with my wife's niece, who would have intimate knowledge of what's going on as well. Uh, the story would read like a reenactment of Peter being delivered from prison. It's just an amazing story. And they just prayed and prayed and prayed until the one leader said, today's the day. Today's the day we escaped. They were just waiting on the Lord. God said to that leader, today is the day. And they made what preparation they needed to make. And they walked out of that place and, and uh, were not stopped. Mm. God protected them. And uh, we just thank the Lord for that uh, demonstration of God's power and God's mercy. Mm. God's blessing. Mm. Amen. Pastor Josiah mm -hmm. San Robin is now the director of the School of Soto. Robin uh, is one of the three young men who went to uh, Carfu. This would be where Don Mopley and the God Missionary have their headquarters. Uh, they have a, uh, a secondary high school there besides a, a Bible Institute. And he, along with two others, went there for the four-year program and uh, graduated from that. It's been several years back now. And, uh, these three men are getting integrated into mm -hmm. the administration uh, of the work that we have there in uh, the upper highlands of Central Highlands of Haiti. We got a call from him oh, probably a month or so ago now, and uh, it was a video call through WhatsApp. And he said, Pastor, he says, I'm, I'm teaching an English class. I've got five students here in this classroom. We're having a class right now. And I'm asking these five students to talk to you in English. And each one of those five said a very, some very simple words uh, that I could pretty much understand. And we just carried on as a very brief conversation. And Roman Dazil did some translating if that was necessary. But it was a unique opportunity. I, he said, this isn't the only time we'll do that. We'll do it again. But it's just, just seeing those students, and uh, they, I'm not much to look at. I'm not very photogenic, but at least they could see who I was. But, uh, and, uh, but it was a, it was a, a very uh, inf an informational time. And uh, it was an opportunity that I, I relished and look forward to again. <clears throat> but in spite of the... In spite of the social and economic hardship, the leadership team uh, continues their, their annual group meetings. Uh, most of them are held right there in Soto. They have a, a, a youth convention, a youth camp in, in December, just before Christmas. Then over the Easter time, they have a week to 10 day camp meeting. And we would have gone <laughs> Especially <coughs> during that time in our annual visit to Haiti. We have not been to <coughs> Haiti in four years now. Uh, but they, they've been able to hold these services and the uh, camp meeting, and pastors' conference that they have. And we, we thank the Lord for that. <coughs> so, just a couple of things that I would mention about Haiti that we need to keep in our, in our prayers. The first is that. Um, Brother Motley, in uh, March, the end of March, maybe the 1st of April, flew into Cape Haitian. Uh, he doesn't dare fly into Port-au-Prince anymore. Cape Haitian is in the north of the country. I know some of you probably know where that's at. I don't know. But uh, and got a hold of the lawyer that HIM uses. They, he lives somewhere near the border between Dominican and Haiti. And they met there at Cape Haitian, and uh, he just discussed some things that we need, we need to be looking at, the work that's there in the Central Highlands. 
One of them is uh, in the issue with our Officer Monte, and uh, you know, another Saxon woman would talk to him and say, uh, <coughs> um, "Well, as long as it's, everything's going okay, we won't, we don't need that Officer Monte as active as they would normally be." And uh, Pastor Dubois has been in the state since 2015. So we, we're, we're not wanting to presume on the Lord, uh, but so we do need to be it, uh, talking about and moving forward with the, the next asramata that we need for their meeting. And that's why we're getting in touch with the lawyer that's there. And uh, the registration of the school, that somehow has lapsed, and uh, in order for them to offer secondary education, they have to uh, have uh, some type of uh, uh, well, he used the word patent. Now that probably a different word that we would use, but it's it's, right. it's the authorization to to administer tests to the sixth graders who are wanting to go on into secondary education, and uh, so that needs to be uh, attended to as well. <clears throat> so let's be praying. Let's pray for Brother Motley. I know we're 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 borrowing him. We have for some time. And uh, he's been our eyes and the ears on the field, although he's very limited in his going as well. But thank the Lord that our church is alive and well. Our pilgrim brothers and sisters in the Lord are, are as active as they've ever been. And uh, he was just telling me, he, he was saying, your VBS, you, you, VBS you had there. I said, yeah, that was just last week. Yeah, I says, I, I saw those pictures on Facebook, he says. I really would like to do something like that here in Soto. It's a youth campus for the for the teenagers, and they haven't done anything like this for the children for a long time. When Marianne and my daughter and others went there, um, when Brother Newman was uh, missionary secretary, and uh, and the Denders were went in there, they did something with the children. Well, they haven't done anything like that since then. And, uh, but uh, they are they're moving forward. They're not discouraged. They're not. Uh, disheartened, and we need to keep them in our prayers. Amen. So moving on to Brazil. And uh, July of 2021, we had Stephen Kesian and Sophia back in the States for four months of deputation. Steve had requested a month's delay in their services when he got, well, he let me know before he got here, right? And I started working on it immediately. But uh, he had been ill prior to them coming, and he was still recovering from that illness. And uh, so he said, if you could reschedule the first month of that deputation services, so I, I did so. And uh, so during the months of August and September then, they held 29, 28 services uh, in deputation. God bless them and help. They returned to Brazil the first of November, only to return back to the States toward the end of December to attend the funeral of his brother, David stayed there here in the States for the whole month of January. The council wanted to be sure that he uh, had sufficiently assisted his mom and dad and the family, and he's feeling more and more that weight as the eldest of the family, eldest of his siblings, and uh, even talked with us about it may come down to, I may have to leave the field for a, a length of time. And I said, oh, Lord, give us someone that'll, that'll get there. Call someone to Brazil. Mm -hmm. and there's a young lady in one of our churches that is feeling that call. Mm -hmm. And uh, we're thanking the Lord for whatever part she would have to play in that. But so, uh, the, Lord will, uh, the Lord will direct in that. And we need to be praying about that. I've been mentioning mm -hmm. the council more than one time. Need to be prayed. The Lord will put their hand upon some young couple or teenagers or someone that would be willing to go to Brazil. Now, in, back in Brazil, Brother Mills had good intentions. He said, as he met with us that fall, that one of the goals of their fourth term will be to get the training Bible. Bible Training Institute back up and running. That has not happened at this point. There's been a number of things that he's had to look at and take care of. Uh, projects that uh, were 
potentials, but they moved into the urgent, uh, the urgent uh, capacity, uh, and he had to take care of them. <clears throat> One of them was uh, a result of a very wet, dry season. Uh, okay, that's about like us saying a very snowy summer. <laughs> I know that sounds like an oxymoron, but uh, they had a very unusually wet, dry season. They're going into the dry season again, and the river, I call it the river, the creek that they have to cross to get to their station is, is going down fast. And, um, but in the dry season, if you remember the pictures we showed about uh, the, the bridge that he built, all the people in that area would be using that bridge. It's really over the muck and mire of the bed of that creek bed. And there's still a little channel that goes through, but um, it's, it's, you know, it's in place and they used it that, that year. But last year, during uh, the dry, during the dry season of last year, that water never got any closer than about four to six feet on the top of that bridge, the footbridge. So they never even saw the footbridge to use it during the dry season last year. And, um, but, uh, so they, uh, the, what happens though, and it's, it's circumstances that you'd have to be there to understand them. <laughs> when that water rises between dry and wet season, 40 feet, and you've got a creek that would just be lazily going down the bed stream and then in the wet season is 40 feet. My my thought is like 40 feet. Wow, that's that's gotta be a rushing torrent. No, it isn't. It isn't. It's just a lazy stream. It's just that it goes up 40 feet. All the, the, in the fountains of water in the in the in the uh, Amazon valleys. But the creek, the creek bed becomes exposed in the dry season. Mm -hmm. And it's just sand and stone. And when you have a wet, dry season, you have an unusual amount of water that's running down those banks that usually isn't. And this past year it was so bad that they, they, they had to do something. They were losing the access to the creek gullies that were being made. So he, he started a project soon after he got back in the end of January. Save the port. Save the port. And there were pictures of this in our bulletins how they made this basin at the, at the entrance of their gate to catch all the water coming from their developed area of the jungle area there. And piped it down into the, down into the, the stream. And it worked wonders. After I heard they had their first gully washer, I said, how did that, how did that system work? Well, I said, it just worked fine. It just worked very, very well. But it took some time and uh, God enabled them to, to get it in, in time. What, another thing that's happened in the months of uh, uh, March, April, May, and June, four months, uh, the, uh, it's, a, it's a health food type of fruit that uh, it's ACAI. I don't know what the pronunciation of that word, but it's a it's a very purple berry. And there was a farmer there, Monica, I believe, that agreed to sell to our pastors in in Manaus five uh, large styrofoam containers that would be packed with ice and this fruit ready to sell. And it was a it was a, a, a money making project, but that money was earmarked for the interior work at St. Joseph's, and at the very last. Picture I want to show here. The very last four, I've got to change, change some some uh, screens on my laptop to give you give you those last four pictures. But um, they went in. They made a trip in a week ago. They came out a week ago. They were in for a week and into St. Joseph's, and they built the, the foundational pillars and the floor choice platform that they're building. The prayer house, they're calling it. Money from the sale of that fruit juice is what's financing that. And she was so pleased that this is something that they are doing themselves. 
They have not asked the states for any money. They're wanting to do this themselves. And it was, uh, it was read every day. I'll show you some of those pictures. <clears throat> Another project that came urgent was the, uh, the pole barn garage that he wanted to put on the other side of the creek. You see, you know, trucks and cars don't float. <laughs> and uh, they have to leave their vehicle on the other side. And uh, cannot get it under roof when it's burning hot sun that bakes the paint. And so it just became necessary. So they have built a pole, stop, a pole barn style garage. It does not have walls yet, but it will soon have a concrete base to it so they can at least get their vehicle out from the, the burning sun. And that pole barn style uh, has been built and you'll see a picture of that as well. I did get a picture of, the, of, of some work in Manaus. I've been there enough time to know exactly what they were talking about. There's a back gate to that compound. Our property there in Manaus, uh, there's a street running in front and there's a street running in the back. So we have access to the front and back. That back gate was rarely used, but it became a, a drug, uh, it became like soon, came, became the scene of drug activity for the young people because the gate was wide enough for a vehicle, but it set back off the road. So it was like in a little alcove. But they, they, and when they realized what was happening, and they, this last uh, year, they, they tore that all out and just put a doorway in that back part, because they're never going to use it for a vehicle. The people that lived around them thanked them time and time again for cleaning up that area that had become a, sort of a focus point of drug activity in their little community. He was very thankful for that. Brother and Sister Mills have been making some inroads in the hearts and homes of the people on their side of the creek. What was happening there was, when he came back from deputation, there were some of the family uh, across the creek that had been very instrumental and been faithful in coming. And some of them started to fall away. There was another church that started up on that side of the creek. And so he said, well, we're going to start focusing on our side of the thing. And there's a number of families there, not that they hadn't been, but they sort of redirected their focus. And one of the efforts they did is spent a while back now, they, their, their Sunday morning service is a Sunday school, and it starts at 8 o'clock in the morning. Now, what are we doing Sunday morning, Sunday morning 8 o'clock? Well, we're not, we're not going to church. Now, if you're out in central Pennsylvania, they start church sometimes at 9 o'clock, so maybe you are getting more aware of what's happening within the hour or two on Sunday mornings. But uh, there's a reason why, because it's cooler in that early morning hour than later. So they get done with their Sunday school probably around 9 or 9.30. So they went back to the compound, or they were at the compound. The services are at the house. She made their Sunday dinner. They have Sunday dinners like we do. They're, they're human like we are. Yeah. <laughs> Sunday dinner. But they just felt the Lord wants us to take our Sunday dinner and go visit the one fellow, the one in his 50s, but he had been coming more and more faithful. And so they took their Sunday dinner to him. Now, I don't suppose that had ever happened to any of them's families. And, uh, but they did. They just wanted to try to show to the community in which they have to live that uh, they're interested in them. They wanted to develop a relationship with those families. And as well, uh, another, another thing that happened within the last two months, and that is uh, Pastor Albany, uh, Brother Albany, who is not a pastor or a minister, but uh, he's the groundskeeper there at, at uh, the compound in the house. Albany and Othray, very dear friends of the, of the mills. But his uh, sister passed away. About a four hour trip away, and Steve and Albany and Albany's pastor, Pastor Agane, the three of them went the distance, stayed overnight, and, and uh, it was the village, the city, where uh, Pastor Marcus and his wife moved to. They had been pastoring their church at, uh, at Monte Pesquale. And so while they were there, Pastor Matthew said, you pray about it, Pastor Steve, pray about it. The next church plant, could it be in my, could it be in my city? 
Mm. Well, that's, that's four hours away from the now study. Uh, there's interest there in starting up another church. And mm. we just back to work for that. It all came about with them making that trip to uh, attend that funeral of uh, Albany's sister. So let me, uh, let me see. Something I was, and I could have gotten an exact amount as I've been through conference already. Uh, but it is a tad over 42,000. So it's, it's slightly more than what was given last year. And we do thank you for your giving. And uh, certainly the Lord has been blessing. Uh, the mission fund is the healthiest fund of any of the funds operational funds of the mission, of, of our conference. I was, when I first started years back as a, as a council member, there, there was a time when the mission fund had to borrow from the general fund, to, not, to, uh, not to go into the red. Well, what's borrowing? <laughs> you're, you're getting into the revenue borrowing, but at least we had operational funds. Well, that's the other way around, and I don't need to go into that. But, uh, but the mission fund is, is the healthiest of the operational funds, the largest increase over from income to expenses, and uh, we just thank the Lord for that. <clears throat> so um, let me uh, let me uh, go down, and we're going to sort of the pictures. I'll, I'll come back and have a, a closing prayer, and perhaps some questions if you uh, if you would have. Them. So yeah, I think we'll have the lights out on this side, and uh, the. They're going to put that microphone on. On my, on my thumb drive, and then I have it on my computer. And the thumb drive uh, didn't have the black, the black on. But anyway, this, these first ones are okay. Uh, and this would have been last Easter, and the, uh, the campaign time is a time of, of weddings and baptisms, children dedications, and ordinations. Hmm. And the Sunday morning service, which is the concluding service of, 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 the, whole, of the whole camp meeting, usually lasts about five hours. So uh, that, uh, and uh, um, so we're going to, I think we do this down here. There's just a few here at the beginning that are, that is, the, that is the pastors that were at the, at the pastor's conference representing the, the, the senior pastors. Most of our churches there have two or three associates. You say, mm. wow, they must be big churches. No, they just have men that are designated as uh, uh, in charge of music, or in charge of uh, evangelism, uh, maybe uh, in charge of prayer. And uh, But this is the senior pastor, the one in the very center is Pastor Ron Gale. This is... Uh, that's actually the church in Moliere. This is the youth, this was the youth uh, convention, youth camp that they had back in January, in, in December. That's uh, Dizil, that's Robin Dizil who is now director of uh, education at, at Soto, hmm. director of the school. All right. This is, uh, now we're back to going into Brazil, <clears throat> this is uh, the Facebook, the Facebook, uh, when you go to F Nils's family, Nils's family Brazil update, it's a, it's a member only uh, site, and that's the picture you will see. That's the crib. That's what they call a crib. I <laughs> call it a river. Yeah. Um, but that's what they call it. There's a very limited time when it is a crib. <clears throat> now, that, uh, step down, this is the gate. When it's at high tide, you use that word high tide, they will drive the motorboat right through this gate, park it up in here somewhere. 
<laughs> Imagine having to park on this side. This is the, let me know the picture of this. This is the two lots that we purchased on the other side. And this is where the site of the garage is. But when it's low, and you have to walk across that bridge, at low time, you're going down a sandy beach, crossing the bridge. Well, we, out on the canoe, we got pushed across, pulled across, and come up the other side. You're carrying everything out and everything in. Hmm. It is, it is challenging enough that when they first went there four years ago, the natives said, Nashville said, are you going to be here during the dry season? Oh, we're going to be here full time, 12 months out of the year. And they made that commitment because of the difficulty of, of the dry season. Now that's the bridge. Hmm. This is back on the compound here. And you walk all the way down, cross the bridge, and then see the, the, the crib makes a curve right there. So you've got a landing site on that side, and then you've got a landing site on this side, which is the only, only opportunity to do that in this river situation for quite a long ways up and down. So it's a, it's a, a strategic point of, of transportation in uh, Monocompa River. There's the uh, spillway, save the port project. And the pipe that's in the bottom, then it goes down the creek. They put that pipe down, halfway down that creek. And then once the river started, during the rainy season, they would pull a piece of pipe off and pipe off the bottom. But uh, there was a lot of, of erosion going on. This is the, <coughs> that's the a picture of it. It took four of our men to carry one of those. Now, on the, on the Mount of Company end of that, Transaction, just two men, just two men carry it. But it takes four men to carry that. It's full of ice and uh, the, the uh, juice that they were selling. And that is one of those, that's, that's the tree the fruit grows in. Hmm. And that's a picture of the, of the little plastic. They'll, they'll sell water that way. If you've been in Haiti or in they'll, they'll sell water in, in, in plastic. You know, just sort of bite a little corner off. This is their, their current Sunday school crowd. Mm. Their youth group crowd. And that's, that's the force. Some of you, these pictures, some of you have seen these pictures, but one of the first things they did when they, when they moved there, this force was only about that wide, and we helped them double the width of that because that's where they were going to be having their services. This was the youth, the youth camp that they had. And it was three or four of the pastors in Manaus, plus some of their young people that came. They had 50. Where they sleep them all? In hammocks on that porch, in the wooden house that was the original house mm -hmm. when uh, the missionaries before them that we bought the property from, that was the house they lived in until they built the, the brick house. And then about 30 of them inside the house. So that's Pastor Mark, Marcus, that's uh, Brother Marcus and his wife. That's a new family coming to uh, Pastor Jusen's church, Nova Floresta. This was when they went to the funeral of Agane's, uh, um, Albi's uh, sister. And uh, that's having a Lunch and dinner. This is a new guard dog in training. <laughs> <laughs> Looks very friendly. And Sophia with the guard dog on her lap. <laughs> she turned six last January. Mm -hmm. That's incredible. We were there for her first birthday. That would have been. They, they got her when they went back. From, from the states on deputation. They came back at Thanksgiving time and they had her for 
the weekend. They said, when are we going to bring her back to the, to the uh, orphanage? He said, you know, you're going to keep her. They, weren't, they had no bed, they had nothing. Hmm. And uh, that January, we were in there, she had her first birth day. She's six now. <laughs> Now this, oh, this is the beginning of uh, the garage, using the roof that we took off the old, the old roof off the compound, and, and put the new tin on the, the compound. That was a year and a half ago. Here it is there, without the, without the sides. They'll they'll put sides out so they can secure it, but right now it's just to keep the sun off of that four-door S10 that they bought. Here in Brazil. Chevy S10, four door, only two wheel drive. And this is the, these are the two lots, the only two lots that were left to purchase. And it was just providential that they became aware that they were the only two left and that they were still available. Because they would have lost their access to the other side of the street. Hmm. God's, God's ways are perfect. Let's see here. Well, I'm back to the beginning there. I, I want to see if I can. Just to, what time is it? It's three. I want to see if I can't get. Uh, this was. It's three. This was bulletins. Okay, I want to. See, that's the. Uh, I go to uh, documents. I go to. Can't get into. Oh, okay. These are the last four pictures I was talking about. This is not in St. Joseph's. It's a, it's, a, it's a little village beyond St. Joseph's, the interior work that we have. It, uh, it takes about six hours to get there. You go by boat uh, once you get to the river. And, uh, but uh, that's the team that came from uh, Manaus, plus the fellows that were there at St. Joseph's. And they, uh, they're, they're happy that they got that far. And now, the next time they go back, they'll go a little further. This was the night service they had. This would have been in a person's house. They don't have a place yet. Um, but this was the night service. And I, I've, got, I've got video, but I have not discovered how to run video through that. I, I need a lot of education on this kind of stuff. But uh, this was a, a meal that they had. There was a group of workers, and this is what they, they put the post in the ground, and this is the framework that they're going to be using for the prayer house. Now can't you just taste that Brazilian food if you've never had it? That is one display of food, and I think that is the end of that one. So well, let's, uh, let's go back to Just keep it down that way. If it'll do it. If it doesn't, it won't. That's fine. You'll see a black screen. <laughs>